Hey, Sidewinder. How are you doing this morning? Poor cat. Can never scratch behind her ears. She tries her best, but she can't get her leg to go up there and scratch. Yep. Yeah. She thinks she's scratching it now when I'm doing it. Her legs just will not get up there behind her ears and scratch. It's a shame. <laughs> Snoopy, you gonna help? Hey, it's uh, Sunday morning here. Early August. Uh, when I was a kid, we had a local country doctor. He, uh, He told me this story. I, was, I had an appointment up there with him for something. I don't know what. He, uh, when he was young, he was doing his residency in a hospital up in Baltimore, and uh, he had an appointment that day with a young man from the inner city. Young black fella. I guess he was only about eight years old. His mom brought him in there. Anyhow, he uh his mom was sitting there in the room with him filling out some papers. And the doc walked in and said, Hello young man. How are you? The boy says I got smiling mighty Jesus. The doc says, smiling mighty Jesus, that's great. That's wonderful. This doctor was a Christian. He'd uh, not been a Christian real long, and he was excited about his faith, and he read the Bible a lot. Uh, as much as he read his uh, uh, medical journals and everything and studied, he also read his Bible. And the young boy, um, didn't smile. He just kind of said, I said, I got smiling mighty Jesus. And the doc said, I heard, yeah, that's great. I, I do too. Carry him right in my heart. Got him right in my heart. That's wonderful. That's an important thing in life. And, uh, the boy looked even more perplexed said, I got smiling mighty Jesus. About that time, his mother, who had been concentrating on filling out some paperwork, looked up and said, Doc, what the young man is trying to tell you is he's got spinal meningitis. <laughs> uh, they had a good laugh about that, and Doc was very embarrassed. But, uh, you know, his mind was working the way God designed it to work, his brain. His brain was working the way God designed it. Uh, we read in Psalm, Psalms 101, uh, I think verse 3 and 4, David wrote, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. And in the next verse, verse 4, it also says, I will not know a wicked person. God designed the brain. He designed it a certain way. And these verses in the Bible there, they're not in there a lot, but they're in there and they're important. Well, set no wicked thing before my eyes. And that's a, a good admonition. It's God knows that what you put in your brain, your input that you put in your brain changes how your mind works. Let me let me put that or turn that around. What you fill your mind with changes your brain. There's this thing called neuroplasticity. Our brains are changeable, and you can literally build a better brain. God knew this because He designed it, and He admonished us to not 
set wicked things before our eyes, not to look at wicked things or to know wicked people for a reason, important reason. It changes your brain. Your brain literally will change by what you put in it. And this doctor had been studying God's Word so much when this young inner city boy kind of garbled what he was saying to the doctor. The first thing that came into mind wasn't even a, a medical term. It, his, uh, his faith, what he'd been reading in the Bible was the first thing that came to mind when he was trying to piece together what this young fellow was saying. Instead of hearing a medical term, spinal meningitis, the first thing his brain went to was smiling mighty Jesus. And it's the same with, with our brains. You go filling your brain watching a bunch of movies where there's killing and a bunch of bed hopping going on and, you know, just a lot of violence. It degrades the quality of your brain. And a generation or two ago, uh, we saw Hollywood under Satan's control doing things that would change uh, people's brains in our country. They, it's important to Satan to destroy the family unit. You know, a man, his wife, and their children, because that reflects the Trinity. God the Father, the Holy Spirit, and Christ the Son. That reflects the, the family unit of, of a man, his wife, and their kids. Um, Satan wants to destroy that. That's why he pushes homosexuality and transsexuality and all that fool stuff. Um, a generation or so ago, he started seeing these sitcoms and movies coming out openly portraying people who were homosexuals and in a positive light and it has literally changed people's brains. I mean something that was abhorrent to people and disgusting and just unthinkable has become something that you're supposed to be proud of now. Celebrate Pride Month. It's ridiculous, but we can see how it does work. So you really should be careful what you're putting in your brain, what you're putting in your mind, because it does literally change your brain. Um, it used to be the thing <clears throat> people say, well, I, I, I was born that way. I was born a homosexual. Got my brain scans. They did studies. Brain scans of people who are homosexuals are different. That shows they're, oh, we're different. So we're homosexuals because our brains are different. Well, they got it backwards. Their brains are different because they chose to go down the path of homosexuality. That's just an example of how your brains can change. Satan was very masterful at changing the brains of an entire country close to the world almost uh, but see we're I just want to give an admonition be careful what you put in your brain I mean don't if you go watch a bunch of movies where there's violence and killing or play video games where there's violence and killing realistic video games or uh, you know view a lot of pornography that's a wicked thing it's changing you. It's making you a different person. Someone that is not as good. Not as, not, that's not good for society. It's not good for yourself, for your family. So we all really need to be careful what we put in our brains, <clears throat> what we put in our minds, as it literally changes our brains. Now that you're aware of this, we should take more time to cram our 
minds full of good things, positive things, things from God's Word. And uh, it'll change us for the better. Your family will thank you. God will be pleased and you'll have a, a, a better life. You know, because God, stuff God puts in the Bible, or all these do's and don'ts are not there to steal away your fun. It's there, it's there for, to improve your life, make things easier and better for you. It's, it's a operator's manual for us. The Bible is an operator's manual for us how to get through this life. So, anyway. All right, just what, this is just what uh, I felt like I was supposed to uh, relate to you this morning. Um, hope it uh, helps some of you or pushes you in a positive direction. Anyhow, I know I've got to work in this area myself. So, all right, we'll catch you later. Have a good day. Open that Bible up. Read. Stay away from that porno site you've been visiting when nobody's looking. All right. See you.